I've been going down to the Antarctic since the late 1980s. My first trip down there was as an undergraduate, just as I was graduating. I was a technician down there working on krill, and then essentially during graduate school focused on the ozone hole. The Western Antarctic Peninsula is a, is a gem, an amazing dramatic landscape. Early explorers called it the land of the gods, and that's what it feels like. Everything down there is so much larger and is so dramatic. It has huge mountain ranges, several thousand feet, that border right on the ocean. Those mountain chains are carved up by big glaciers. There are huge icebergs. When you look at old ice, you can actually stare several feet into it, and it's a deepest blue. It, it literally looks like glass. And some of the most dramatic moments are when the ocean is completely covered with ice and snow. It looks like land, but it's still being impacted by these mammoth 20 to 30 foot swells, so it looks like the land is breathing. It's one of those places everyone who goes down there to work almost gets addicted to it. It's very hypnotic. But there's not much scientific debate that the Earth is moving to a different state and that the climate is changing. The West Antarctic Peninsula is the fastest winter warming place on Earth, something like 1.1 degrees per decade, which is huge. We can actually see that the sea ice isn't being made in the wintertime. The spatial extent has declined. The number of days of the year where you form sea ice has declined. And perennial ice, this is the ice that is present all year round, most of it's disappeared. So major areas that used to be completely covered when I was a graduate student will be open water before the end of my career. And that's pretty humbling to see. The biology of the Antarctic is very tightly coupled to the ice, all the way from the phytoplankton through the zooplankton up to the higher trophic levels like penguins and seals. Adelie penguins are likely to be gone from Palmer Station probably in around five, six years. But now you're seeing subpolar penguin species, chin straps and gentoo penguins showing up and filling in that space. Elephant seals, which tend to avoid ice, are really happy and their populations are booming. It's not like, okay, we crank up the heat and everything dies. What happens is, is ecosystems tend to move. And, you know, as a scientist, it's an amazing opportunity. It's a little daunting, but you get to watch this migration happen during your professional career. I just joined a long-term project that's been operating down the Antarctic for ecological research. What we're trying to do is track sort of the impact and then the migration of the ecosystems in this region. You can really start trying to tie together how slight changes in the physics ripples all the way through the chemistry and biology and the entire ecosystem. And it's critical that we start studying now because the ocean is changing in our lifetime. And when the oceans change, it will change the Earth's climate. It'll change weather patterns. It'll affect us all. And so it's important to understand where the oceans are going because it's going to directly impact what kind of world our kids and our grandkids will live in.